Hi everyone, how are you today? I'm Reza Sela Utama. My English is not perfect, but I will try my best. From my accent, you can get that I come from Indonesia. Yes, Indonesia, the place where we so discuss all things together about the economy. If not because of the global pandemic, we will have a discussion while enjoying the beautiful nation of Indonesia in Bali. Thank you to the entire team for the International Economic Association for the effort to keep the IEA World Congress even online. I hope this pandemic ends soon, and I hope all of us are always given good hope. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today I'd like to share to you our research about the food insecurity and child labor. Me and Mrs. Dwini Handayani have conducted a research to prove about the effect of food insecurity on the rise of child labor. Okay, there is the outline for my presentation today. Here it is. There is a message I want to say through this photo. Child is meant to learn, not to earn. Based on ILO data, the number of child labor in the world in 2016 which 152 million children, and this amount is suspected to be underestimated due to the limitation of the system used to collect data on child labor in most countries. How about Indonesia? Official statistics record 4.1 million Indonesian children are categorized as working children. In six years, that, that number has decreased to 3 million. Most of them work in agricultural sector. The interesting thing is the most of these children work for reasons to help increase their family income, not for themselves. For the information, Indonesia has a target to be free from child labor by 2022. Okay, we agree that working for children can harm their economic future, especially in the broad process of forming their human capital. In economic theory, children who start work in layer will have a lower income than children who start work at the right age, usually at 17 years old and over. The margin of state labor can be seen from two sides. From the demand side, there are attempts by business owners to maximize profit by using children as work as worker because the wage are low. From supply side, poverty is the main reason for children to enter the labor market. So far, poverty has often been measured through a monetary approach. However, there was a discussion about whether or not the monetary poverty measure could be used to determine whether it was difficult for a household to meet their basic needs. Therefore, this study tried to use another measure to determine poverty in terms of its impact on the incident of child labor. Mr. Kausik Basu, in his article, the title is The Economy of Child Labor, said that there are two fundamental theories in explaining child labor. The first is luxury axiom. The small children are the last option for work. They work only if the income of all household members, excluding child, are insufficient to meet the household needs. The second is the substitution axiom. That means child labor and adult labor are substitute. Some opinions say that working is one way in which a child is filial to their parent, socializing in cultural and ethnic entities, even to the practice of religious value. But besides that, there are still risks if a child works. Okay, the purpose of the study was to prove at the effect of food insecurity on children participating in work. The empirical method that can be used is oil ash regression. The main challenge is ensuring the research objective accurately and without bias. We know the potential and regenerative problem can arise from the existence of an observed sociodemographic characteristic of children and the existence of selection bias. The perception of the level of insecurity is related to food insecurity events that have been experienced in the past. Based on the literature review, this study used information on area affected by famine in Indonesia in 1960 and matched this to the place of birth of the head of the household and his partner. The perception of a household head and his partner with regard to the present food insecurity experienced by household is took to be influenced by whether they were born and suffer a famine during their childhood. So this study used an instrumental variable approach with a two-step estimation and fast hunger experience are used to uh, I use as instrumental variable. Okay, this study used microdata from the 2018 SUTNAT, SUTNAT is National Socioeconomic Survey from BPS Statistic Indonesia. I also want to say that we impute the missing value in the main independent variable using common input rights on this data. Okay, that's the result. The level of food insecurity in Indonesia still varies between region. Based on the graph, it can be seen that the level of food insecurity is getting worse in Eastern Indonesia such as Maluku, Papua, and Nusa Tenggara. We call it Marapua. It's about 42.6% of children living in Marapua region experience food insecurity. Ladies and gentlemen, we can see that the percentage of working participation among children increase as food insecurity increases. The food insecurity that occurs in households has almost the same effect in both of urban and rural area, as well as among boys and girls. The participation of children in work can also differ based on gender, although there is no significant difference. It can be seen the proportion of boys who work is greater than girls. This is in line with many studies that show boys have a greater chance of working than girls. 
And based on the figure, we can see that the proportion of children living in rural area who do not go to school is greater than in urban area. Most of them work. Okay, this is some interesting finding. First, the presence of mother in the hospital has a negative effect on child and participant in work. Children who live with their mother will have a lower level of work participation because mother can act as control in hospital decision making, especially their child. Second, Mr. Basu's theory about luxury axiom has been proven in this case. It can be seen that proportion of children who work is greater in group of children living in household with full participation by adult household member. This condition showed that children in Indonesia in 2018 who work is the last choice of their household. After all, adult household members have participated in work, but their total income is still not enough. So the children need to involve to an additional income. This condition can be more safer in poor household group. Poor household will mobilize all human resources in their household to work in order to meet their daily needs. So the children will have more opportunity to be involved in work. Okay, the OS estimation results show that the level of food insecurity is positively related to the participation of working children. Therefore, socioeconomic and demographic factor must be included to the model specification. When the socioeconomic and demographic and geographical characteristic factor are included in the model, the effect of food insecurity on the participation of working children is decreased to 0.05A. As explained in the previous section, the specification of the OLS model has the potential to create endogeneity problem, which can lead to bias in the estimate coefficient result of the main explanatory variable. From the result of the endogeneity test, which show that the food insecurity variable is endogenous. From this table, we can see the negative relationship between the condition of food insecurity in the past and the perception of food insecurity in the present. When a household the head of household and their partner were born or exposed to starvation living in famine area in the 1960s, they will be less likely to feel food insecure in the present because the hunger experienced in the past was more safer than the encountered in the present. The effect of household food insecurity on the working participation on the children is consistent with the estimation result obtaining using the OLS method. We know the interesting finding that children who live in area with no food self-sufficiency actually have lower work participation. Food self-sufficiency in a region is closely related to the improvement of the welfare of agricultural workers. In the end, the condition will be an incentive for farm households to encourage their children to engage in agricultural work to gain greater profit. The other finding is children who live in poor households have lower labor participation. This finding can be attributed to the use of a measure of monetary poverty that is limited to the dichotomy of poor and non-poor regardless of the severity of poverty experienced by a household. The measure of monetary poverty only use a measure relative to the minimum standard of decent living as human in an area. As an alternative, measure of food insecurity are used to assess the extent of household worry and inability to meet their daily needs. This study also identified the effect of social protection program provided by the central or regional government in reducing children participation in work. This can be seen from the negative direction shown by coefficient of all social protection program variable. The reason is that the transfer government income to the hospital act as substitute for a child potential income. So the children should not to work. Okay, there is the conclusion of this research. Uh, first, the percentage of children working is greater in group of children with more severe food insecurity. Second is the IP to self estimation results show a positive effect of food insecurity on the participation of working children. And last is the area of residence as and the other socioeconomic and demographic characteristics have an influence on the participation of children in work. Okay, there is some recommendation from this research. First, mapping of household experiencing or potentially food insecure and providing non-cash assistance, not only for the poor. The second is reducing worries about the food shortage by ensuring availability and affordability. The third is expanding the promotion of the 12-year compulsory learning program and providing incentive. The fourth is, and the last, providing income transfer to food and secure household so that children do not need to work. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so that I can present, I hope the result of the study can be useful, especially in solving set level problems. See you next time.